What do we know, first of all, simply about what is happening on the ground? Well, as you'd expect, Nadia, the, the picture on the ground is pretty confusing at the moment, to say the least. Uh, we do know that, as you mentioned, the President Barnador and the Prime Minister Mokhtar One, uh, the two key members in the interim government set up to steer Mali back towards civilian rule at some stage early next year, have been detained at this military base just outside Bamako, and that they've been detained by Colonel Asimi Goita, who is the, the interim vice president, but also the man who was the leader of the military coup d'etat in August last year uh, that got rid of President Keita. Uh, his nose seems to have been put out of joint by the fact that uh, uh, the two key figures in the interim government decided to sack uh, the defence minister and the security minister, both of whom are military officers, without consulting uh, Colonel Goita himself. Uh, Goita says that he should have been consulted as he's the man who has overall responsibility for defence and security affairs. Uh, whatever the case, uh, those two men and a few other members of that interim government are now at, in detention at Kati military barracks outside Bamako. Uh, ECOWAS, uh, the Economic Community of West African States, is negotiating uh, with the leaders of what appears, although we haven't had official confirmation of this yet, as a coup, coup d'etat, yet another one. Uh, and ECOWAS, together with the African Union, the United Nations, the European Union and the United States, have all condemned in the strongest possible terms what has happened. Uh, but the talks are going on now, apparently. Uh, and M5 RFP, which is a, a sort of a body that brings together opposition politicians and civil society, which has been involved both in the, the, dis, the, the, up, the, 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 the disruption in Malian society before last year's coup d'etat and involved in demonstrations quite recently, is apparently talking to the military, perhaps with a view to getting representation in the next government. At the moment, though, the overall picture, as I suggested, remains a little unclear. I suppose the next question, Rob, is really um, why is this happening now? Why are we seeing the Prime Minister and the President deposed at this particular moment? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the interesting thing about the coup d'etat that took place in August last year is that, by and large, it was pretty popular. Uh, President Keita had started as a, as a, as a fairly popular president, you know, he was regarded, he'd been elected quite convincingly, uh, but he failed on so many counts on bringing peace with the Tuareg people in the north of the country in trying to cope with the jihadist insurgency that has spread over the last few years throughout Mali and into neighboring countries. Uh, the, the state of the economy was in decline, the more and more people un, un, unemployed, uh, and he was accused of corruption. So when the military finally did get rid of him, despite international protests, uh, there wasn't much dissent about it inside Mali itself. However, in the, in the intervening period, uh, this interim government... Uh, has not really managed to do very much better than the previous government. And indeed, the military uh, ha has failed to take control uh, of the insurgency, find, find, failed to get on top of the jihadist insurgency in Mali, failed to bring peace with the Tuaregs in the north. Uh, and anger has started to grow towards the military. And I think perhaps it is because of that that the interim government decided that they might be best to get rid of the two military uh, members of their cabinet and replace them with, with, with other people. But that in turn has angered uh, Colonel uh, Goita, the, the uh, interim vice president. We're in the situation that we're in now. Rob Parsons, uh, our chief foreign editor, thank you very much indeed uh, for your analysis on the programme today.